Moscow has accused Ukrainian authorities of violating press freedom and imposing censorship after several crews of Russian journalists were denied access to the country. They will stop at Donetsk airport in the east of the country, where thousands of people are protesting against the interim government and its policies. RT's Peter Oliver is there and brings the details. I flew into Donetsk earlier on uh, today. Um, now, uh, I was alongside a, a American colleague of mine from uh, the RT's Rutley News Agency. Now, we had no problems getting in here. However, um, what we have heard is that there's several um, news organizations, several TV crews from Russia were knocked back at the border. They were denied entry into Ukraine, uh, flying from Moscow into here into Donetsk. Um, well, what we have seen happening here in the city is um, a large demonstration that's been marching through the town. Uh, there's no demonstrators noticeably in front of the parliament building, which is just behind me. Now, this comes after the... Um, the new governor of the region, Mr. Taruta, ruled that there was no protest, no demonstrations to be allowed in front of this building. There's, all we see right now is just a few people milling around and a, a large presence of um, some riot police guarding the front door there. However, there are people marching through the streets of Donetsk right now. We've seen pictures of those and seen them. I've seen them with my own eyes. Uh, um, one of the things that those groups are wanting is they want the release of a man who's become known as basically the people's governor. He was the guy who said that he didn't... Um, he didn't think that Mr. Taruta, who was put in place by the uh, the government in Kiev, was representing the people here in Donetsk. He put himself forward. He was then arrested. Now, people are campaigning for his release right now, but it does seem that... Um, Whereas he's been arrested, those that did exactly the same type of thing on Independence Square in Kiev, well, they're the ones that are trying to run for president right now. Among them, well, very far right leaning politicians, well, people self styling themselves as politicians. I looked at just who exactly one of the most latest front runners for president is. Far right, but right on track for power. Yes, sooner or later we are doomed to fight against Moscow Empire. The only guarantee of peaceful, civilized life for the peoples reforming their life near Russia is full liquidation of the empire. This is Dmitry Yarosh, the leader of Right Sector, the ultra-nationalist far-right-wing group who has announced he's running for president of Ukraine. He's the subject of an international arrest warrant. Issued by Russia, he's charged with inciting terror attacks and extremist actions. Ukrainians have always supported the liberation struggle of the Chechen and other Caucasian peoples. Now is the time for you to support Ukraine. As the right sector leader, I urge you to step up the fight. Russia is not as strong as it seems. Despite his support of internationally recognized terrorists like Doku Umarov, following his announcement that he would throw his hat into the ring for president, it's understood he demanded from the Ukrainian Defense Ministry that they provide his guys with weapons and access to hardware. And added that he would resort to more decisive measures if the government fails to respond. It's been clear for some weeks now that the men of violence are the people ex exercising the uh, the decisive influence over the government in Kiev. Uh, only at the end of 2012, the European Parliament uh, condemned the Svoboda party and said that its values of, of racism and anti-Semitism were incompatible with the European Union's fundamental values. The present uh, regime in Kiev has five members uh, of that party and there are three further members in key positions of power. So we can see that the extreme right, the nationalist right and so on, uh, is exerting an absolutely decisive role and Europe is simply looking the other way. Walk around the center of Kiev and you can't miss the red and black insignia of right sector. The group, who are referred to by some as neo-Nazis, are actively recruiting. Hello, is this right sector? I would like to find out whether or not I can join your organization. If you're young and athletic, have military experience or consider yourself an intellectual, you can definitely help us out. You can come to our office and fill out a form. Right sector aren't the only far-right group operating in Ukraine right now. This scene shows an armoured personnel carrier flying the flag of the Ukrainian Patriotic Army, responsible for some of the most horrific scenes of repression in the country's history. 
Peter Oliver, RT, Ukraine. Meanwhile, Moscow believes the new government in Kiev is under the influence of radical groups and its Western supporters are fully aware of it. The statement was made by Russian's uh, Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov. The so-called interim government of Ukraine is not self-reliant. Unfortunately, it depends on the radical nationalists that undertook an armed takeover of power. And I believe that our Western partners are well aware of what they are. They regularly go to Ukraine, and among themselves, they share extremely troubling accounts of what they see there. But I presume for political reasons, remain silent about that in public.